treasure chest. Have you ever possessed a treasure chest? A real treasure chest. A chest with fabulous wealth inside. We have such a chest in mind. It is a most remarkable one. It is in two almost equal parts, as though divided down the middle. From the outside it does not seem anything exceptional, but when it is open, its contents are bound to be priceless. Each part has a key which is built into it, a kind of combination lock. If you know the key phrase, you can open the compartment. The first one is full of dazzling pictures in gold frames. No human being has ever seen the like of them elsewhere. The second compartment may seem, by comparison, fairly dull, as though it contained parchments rather than pictures. But when examined closely, they are found to be equally priceless. For they tell us how we should act when the pictures come out into our possession. But by now, you will perhaps have realized that the chest we are talking about is the epistle to the Ephesians. When, which is divided into two almost equal parts of three chapters each. Although the division into the chapters is man-made, the two parts of the epistles are clearly marked, as each ends with the word, Amen. This indicates the contents of each part of the letter are genuine. There are no fakes in this chest. The word, Amen, is from the Hebrew. It means faithful. At the beginning of a sentence, it is translated barely. When it comes at the end, it is left. It is left in its Hebrew form, so left to right. Amen. Verily, indeed, the whole of the contents of this epistle is a faithful declaration of a faithful God. The first part of the letter deals with teaching. The second part with deportment or conduct. The first three chapters describe our wealth or riches in Christ. The second three are walk in the Lord. And what about the keys to open each part? Well, the keys are built into the beginning of each section. The key to the part describing our wealth in Christ is the passage in the first chapter beginning. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who blesses us with every spiritual blessing among the celestials in Christ, according as he chooses us in him before the disruption of the world, we to be holy and flawless in his sight. The key to the part outlining our true walk in the Lord is the passage at the beginning of the fourth chapter. I am entreating you then, I the prisoner in the Lord, to walk worthily of the calling which is with which you were called. If we can appreciate the meaning of these two keys and turn them correctly, we shall have gone a long way toward a clearer understanding of this epistle, and indeed of God's purpose of the eons. For there buried deeply in the inner recesses of the chest is a phrase which occurs only once in the whole of God's word, the purpose of the eons. It is a phrase of inestimable, inestimable value, for it throws further light on the theme of our studies, the place of humanity in God's purpose. Let us read the passage where it occurs, chapter 3 from verse 9 and to enlighten all as to what is the administration of the secret which has been concealed from the eons in God, who creates all, that now may be known, made known to the sovereignties and the authorities among the celestials, through the ecclesia, the multifarious wisdom of God, in accord with the purpose of the eons, which he makes in Christ Jesus our Lord. So tomorrow we'll get in to and dig into them treasures and open it up to see exactly what it's saying. The purpose of the eons. Grace and peace.